Your Xbox controller, Xbox One in this case, connected to the PC using Microsoft dongle keeps disconnecting from this PC. Before we dive in in how to fix this issue, and I will present a few solutions, we need to understand some background. So if we go back to the days of the first next-gen consoles, which was Xbox 360, and that was about 20 years ago, Xbox 360 controllers came in two flavors. The first one was a wired USB controller with a non-detachable wire. So the wire was soldered directly into the controller. That one, the wired one, was a normal USB device, and if you plug it in, in your computer, you can use it no problem straight away. However, the wireless controller, even though it did have an adapter with a wire, was always working in wireless mode. So it only used USB for power or for charging a battery pack, however, the connection itself remained wireless. And Xbox 360 controller did not support Bluetooth, since Bluetooth is a very bad protocol. It has been developed for over 25 years now, and it is still bad. Well, it definitely has some pros. First of all, it's wireless, so you don't have wires. Second, it's very, very lower in power consumption, which allows it to be used in tiny devices like your smartwatch or your wearable glucose monitor. And it is also widely supported. Your car stereo, your TV, your laptop, your smartphone, your tablet usually will have a built-in Bluetooth, and if your PC doesn't have one, you can buy a very inexpensive adapter and plug it into your computer. And you can also connect various devices to it. That includes game pads, keyboards, mice, touch pads, touch screens, headphones, speakers, mics, and also some weird devices like lighting fixtures or your thermostat. All of that connected using the same Bluetooth protocol. However, the downsides are Bluetooth connection has a very high lag, so it adds latency and also very low polling rate. And in case of audio, the audio quality is also not too good, especially when recording something using a Bluetooth microphone. But the biggest issue is range, latency and lag. To counter that, the Xbox competitor, for example, PlayStation 3 at the time, used a modified version of Bluetooth for their DualShock 3 controllers that came with PS3. Some other manufacturers, like Logitech, developed their own proprietary connections, such as the Unifying protocol, and Microsoft Xbox went the same way. So if you have an Xbox 360 wireless controller, the only way you can use it with your PC is to purchase a special Xbox 360 controller receiver. This is the only way you can connect an Xbox 360 controller to a PC. In the next version, Xbox One, Microsoft gave you more options. So if you have an Xbox One controller or anything released after that, you can connect it to your PC in wired mode using a USB cable and it will work just fine. You can also use Bluetooth for wireless connection. This will also work, however, you have the same limitations of Bluetooth. And that's why the console, Xbox One and everything after, still communicates with the controller using a proprietary wireless protocol, which works better than Bluetooth. And if you want the same connectivity to your PC or laptop, you need to invest in a Microsoft dongle. This will provide the proprietary wireless connection to the Xbox controller for your PC. And this is exactly where we are having problems now. So when you connect an Xbox One controller to your PC using the Microsoft dongle, it gets randomly disconnected. There are two obvious fixes. The first one, you should use the Xbox accessory app for Windows to try and find and update firmware for both the receiver and the controller itself. Usually, to upgrade firmware on your Xbox One controller, you have to connect it using a USB cable to your PC. Please note that Windows considers the Xbox wireless adapter a networking device, and some of the updates are received through Windows Update. So make sure your Windows has all the latest updates installed. 
if there is a software update, it will be installed, and in many cases, it solves the wireless connection issue as well. If it doesn't, you need to check which type of batteries you are using in the Xbox One controller. For some reason, Xbox One controllers still use your normal AA batteries for power, and I actually welcome this, since those are easy to obtain and you will have a much longer life out of your controller since you can replace the battery anytime you want, compared to other devices that have an inbuilt rechargeable battery which may be a little bit tricky to replace. And this trend continues, Xbox S controller also uses a couple of AA batteries for power, however running controllers using single-use batteries can be a little bit expensive and also not exactly good for the environment. So most people will try to invest in some rechargeable batteries. Xbox controllers run just fine off rechargeable batteries. However, there is a problem with rechargeable batteries. Most AA rechargeable cells are based around nickel chemistry. They are either nickel cadmium, these are usually lower in um, capacity, and the higher capacity ones will be nickel metal hydrate. The problem with those chemistries is they give only 1.2 volts, while your normal non-rechargeable AA battery gives 1.5 volts. And since the controller uses two batteries, that means that instead of 3 volts, that is double times 1.5 volt, it actually receives 2.4 volts, that is double 1.2 volts, which may be a little bit too low for reliable operation. So if you are using rechargeable batteries and you have these connection issues, try to first use normal non-rechargeable batteries and check if the connection issue persists. If you don't have any connection issues while using normal batteries and you still want to use rechargeable batteries, what you can do is to either invest in a special rechargeable pack for Xbox controllers, which provides the required 3 volts, or you can invest in lithium-based AA rechargeable batteries. They usually have an onboard charging in the form of a micro USB or Type-C connector, so you don't even need a separate charger for them. Basically, inside those batteries, there is a lithium cell which gives 3.7 volts, however, there is special circuitry that limits that voltage to exactly 1.5 volts, and that is what the controller wants to have. So invest in a couple of those batteries, this will fix your connection issue if it's power related. Other rechargeable chemistries also do exist. Life PO4, for example, which is a little bit stupid. It has a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts, which is more than twice of a regular AA battery. So you can only use it in a device that requires two AA cells, like your Xbox gamepad, for example, and you insert only one actual Life PO4 battery and another dummy one. Thus, the capacity is very limited and they are also very inconvenient and require special charges. There is also nickel zinc. One cell is 1.6, which is close to 1.5, and some of them actually come with a built-in step-down to 1.5 volts. Two of them without step-down is 3.2, which is safe enough. Low voltage is always safe, it will just malfunction like in our case. Higher voltage than required is dangerous, and actually those AA cells with USB port to charge them can produce 5 volts on the poles while they are being charged. Not all of them do, but some do. So unless you are very sure, you shouldn't be charging the batteries inside the gamepad without removing them. Or apparently, you can forget about all that AA nonsense and just use a USB power bank or a USB wall board to power your Xbox controller. It will still be connected wirelessly, but you can check if the problem is the power input. These are two fixes that often help, and unfortunately they are rarely talked about in those solutions that you may google online. That's why I wanted to point them out. What those solutions usually talk about is disabling the USB power saving options in the device manager in Windows for the wireless adapter for Xbox controller. You can try that, just disable it, it's okay to have it disabled, and see if it fixes the issue, but unfortunately, in many cases, it doesn't. 
Another thing rarely being spoken about is the name of the controller. You can connect several controllers using a single Microsoft adapter, and you can also connect them in different ways, Bluetooth, for example. And some games like Mortal Kombat require you to have different names for the controllers if you want to have several players. And if you have renamed the controller through the device manager, not through Steam, but through device manager, and if you have any non-English characters in the name of the controller, this won't work. And probably this is the reason why this is rarely spoken about, since most tutorials you have are in English and made by English speakers using English operating systems. However, if the language you speak has some non-English characters in the alphabet, for example, German has it, Spanish has it, and some other languages as well, or it uses an entirely different alphabet, like Cyrillic, for example, do not use any of that to name your controllers. Use English words and English letters only. So rename the controllers and uh, the disconnects may stop. Talking about Steam, it does have extensive controller support and some of the features may interfere with the correct operation of your Xbox controller. So what you may try to do is to go to controller settings in Steam. So you open Steam, then settings, controller, general controller settings, and then highlight your Xbox controller if it's not highlighted yet. The menu here may look a little bit different depending on your particular system. However, what you need to do is to untick guide button focuses Steam. This is the uh, Xbox button on your controller. And if you have it turned on, then pressing on the Xbox button will open Steam Big Picture. So untick this setting. And in some cases, in the same menu, you will see a special setting which is called controller shutdown time. This setting probably depends on the way the controller is connected. Anyway, put it to never and that may fix the issue. So remove those sticks, save everything, reboot your PC just in case and check if the connection is stable now. If it still doesn't work and you have an NVIDIA GPU, NVIDIA also provides some support for controllers and those features may interfere with normal operation of your Xbox controller. So what you need to do for NVIDIA is to disable NVIDIA overlay. In the old NVIDIA experience, this is done here. In the new NVIDIA app, you have to go to settings and disable the overlay from there. And after you disable the overlay, try using the controller. If the gamepad stops disconnecting, and you're happy with that, you can continue to use it. And in some cases, the problem is actually caused by a service which is named Xbox Accessory Management Service. So try stopping and then disabling the service by switching it to either manual or disabled mode and see if it fixes the issue with the controller disconnects. If none of that helped and you still experience the issue, there are still few things you can try. The first one is disable fast startup in Windows. You don't need it. It's a stupid feature that shouldn't exist. So go to your old control panel, open the power settings there. On the left, click on what power buttons do. And there, if you have a fast startup ticked and it's grayed out, click on the shield icon and then untick the fast startup, save everything and reboot. You may also want to first delete the controller from the device manager and then delete the adapter from the device manager, reboot your PC and let it install the new drivers. That may also fix the issue. Also remember that in some games, if you don't use the controller for a long time while in the game, the controller will go to sleep and if it doesn't react to any buttons pressed, you must exit and enter the game that should reconnect the controller or in some cases, you only need to minimize the game and then restore it back and this will re-enable the controller. And the final thing, if you are using a Microsoft adapter and especially if you are using Bluetooth and especially if you are using a cheap Bluetooth adapter, they may not always work well with USB 3.0 or USB 4.0 connections. So if you still have some old USB 2.0 ports on your PC, try plugging the adapter there 
if your PC is way too new and it doesn't have USB 2.0 or it's a laptop for example which doesn't have USB 2.0 what you can do is get yourself old USB 2.0 USB hub since they are obsolete at this point they are either very cheap or even free alternatively if you don't want to invest in junk you can get a proper USB type C dock and those docks very often have at least one USB 2.0 connection. So use it to connect the dongle and that should resolve the issue. And some of the options also have USB A plug built in. And funny enough, it can be the other way around. So if you are using a old USB 2.0 connection port on your PC, especially on the front of the case, try plugging in the receiver into USB 3.0 port and it better be on the back of your PC. So these are all the possible fixes, at least which I know of, for this wireless gamepad disconnection problem. I am the god of YouTube! Like, subscribe, jingle bells.